We are a bit vexed by this AIO. On paper, it looks amazing. In person, it's actually kind of stunning. Its build quality is nothing short than your normal ASUS standards, but in actual performance, I just don't know what to say. This is the ASUS ROG Strix LC3 AIO, and you're about to find out why it's been keeping us up at night right here, right now on Robitech. If you're new around here, we've tested out a ton of AIOs, and ASUS is responsible for one of our favorite and best performing ones, the ROG Ryujin 3. Not only does it have an amazing display, but the performance is kind of off the charts. It's been nearly untouchable for over a year. So when we heard that ASUS was bringing an update to their ROG Strix LC AIO lineup, we were pretty stoked. I mean, the Ryujin is amazing, but it also has a really high price tag. The thought of getting an AIO that performed close to the Ryujin for a more accessible price had us celebrating the LC3, but maybe just a bit too soon. As you can tell, we're a bit conflicted here. Starting with the models, the LC3 AIO comes in 240 millimeter, 360 millimeter versions in both black and white. There are versions with ARGB, ones with ARGB and an LCD, and one without ARGB or an LCD. And as far as we can tell, the non-LCD, non-ARGB one is available only in black. As for pricing, the LC3 starts at $179.99, but the one that we're gonna focus on here, the one that we're gonna look at today, is the $234.99 ASUS RG Strix LC3 ARGB 360 millimeter version. So how is the price of this 360 millimeter ARGB equipped LC3 compared to other AIOs like it? At the time of this video, AIOs like the Fantex Glacier 1 D30 were selling for $179.99, while Corsair's IQ-Link H150i RGB was selling for $239.99. So from a price standpoint, Asus has the LC3 landing in that premium landscape right around Corsair's pricing and a little bit more expensive than Fantex's pricing. Now moving on to compatibility, the LC3 has a broad range of CPUs it supports. On the Intel side, you've got LGA 115X, LGA 1200, and LGA 1700, and that covers Intel core processors up to 14th gen. Now we've mentioned this before, but all signs are pointing towards support for LGA 18512, which means that it's gonna support Intel's yet to be released Aero Lake CPUs. Now on the AMD side, the LC3 supports Ryzen CPUs on both AM4 and AM5 sockets. Now because this is the seventh gen Acer Tech pump, there is actually a different mounting hardware for Intel and for AMD, which is kind of a bummer. The brackets for this AIO are the kind that kind of twist and lock into place, and then they match up with the standoffs for each platform. It's not eighth gen Acer Tech easy, but it's still fairly straightforward. Now, if you wanna see how the LC3 is installed, you should check out our live stream right here where we installed the LC3 inside of the Asus GT302, which was, oh yeah, it's right here. It's a very beautiful build. And you know what also is pretty straightforward? You know what, liking and subscribing to both Robitech and Robitech Live, and it's just as cool as this AIO is too. Now, speaking of cool, let's talk about how the LC3 does its job. Now, I already mentioned the seventh gen Acer Tech pump, but did I mention that it's actually a seventh gen V2 pump? Basically with a V2, you're getting a bigger cold plate and a motor with an operating range of 800 to 2800 RPM. The radiator is pretty standard at 27 millimeters thick, so it's similar to the one you get with the AIOs like your Corsair H150i or many of the other standard AIOs out there. Now as for fans, the ARGB model we're testing uses ASUS RG Strix AF12S ARGB fans. These things push 70.38 CFM at an air pressure of 3.92 mm H2O with an operating noise of around 36 decibels. From a sound perspective, it's pretty comparable to the fans like the Corsair IQ-Link RX120s. Unfortunately, these aren't unified magnetic fans like the Ryujin 3 has, but ASUS does include splitter cables for both fans and ARGB. It's a little bit more cabling than we'd like it to be for managing, but I guess systems like Lean Lee's UniFans or Corsair's IQ-Link have us pretty spoiled in that department. Now, before we move on, I've got to point out a few premium touches that ASUS threw in there. Check out the embossed fan centers. Those aren't stickers and they're so shiny. Also, the ARGB pump head is magnetic, so you can rotate it 360 degrees, which is handy if you're building inside of funky cases like the Thermaltake Tower 300, where the motherboard is positioned 90 degrees to the right. Now, the USB header for the ARGB control is also directly connected to this part of the pump head too, so it can move and groove as needed. And this brings us to the ARGB and controls. The LC3 has over 10 different lighting effects that can be controlled via Armory Crate or the Aura Creator software, which is, 
a mixed bag in our opinion. There are a lot of amazing things about Armory Crate, don't get me wrong, and it does things like system control, monitoring, it makes it easy to update and all that stuff, but it is still a very system resource needy RGB application, plus all the other stuff it does. Now this is where Asus made a weird design choice with the LC3. Rather than just a standard motherboard controlled five volt ARGB header, it plugs it in via USB. Now that's fine if you're already using ASUS devices and you have an open USB slot, but if you're considering the LC3 in a non-ASUS system, be aware that you're gonna need to run Armory Creator or Aura Creator alongside your motherboard software. This just feels like an unnecessarily complicated way to do something that's very simple like change RGB. Now enough about RGB, it's kind of time for testing. Now just a reminder, all of our AIO tests are performed in nearly identical Intel and AMD rigs. Notes on the screen right here for details. All of this is done under the same conditions to keep the data as clean as possible. We're talking about same power settings, same ambient temperature, all that stuff. Now we're gonna go through this pretty quickly, so feel free at any point to just pause the video if you wanna make some notes. We're just trying to be respectful of your time. Okay, so how well did the LC3 perform? At CPU idle, the LC3 had an average CPU temperature of 31 degrees Celsius on our Intel platform, while our AMD test bench averaged 39 degrees. This positioned the LC3 in between the 360 millimeter Fantex Glacier 1 D30 and a 240 millimeter height thick Q60 on the Intel side. And it put it on par with the 360 millimeter Arctic Freezer 3 Black on AMD. In our CPU load test, we saw temperature averages of 75 degrees on Intel and 89 degrees on AMD. For comparison, that's performance that's comparable to the Lee & Lee HydraShift 360R on both AMD and Intel. Now in our charts, that puts the LC3 in the bottom three for performance under load. Finally, during our 1440p gaming test, the LC3 held average temperatures of 49 degrees Celsius on Intel and 56 degrees on AMD. On the Intel side, these temps put the LC3 back in the bottom three with the height thick Q60 and Lee and Lee's HydraShift 360R. The LC3 looks a little better on the AMD side with a two degree lead over the thick Q60, but two degrees behind the Glacier 1 D30. Now when we look at the thermal performance overall, the LC3 does a decent job keeping the CPU temperature managed in normal operating scenarios on both AMD and Intel, but it's nowhere near the most prominent or performant. Interestingly, even though we saw the LC3 struggle to keep the heat down in our CPU load tests, it put out our best Cinebench thermal score on AMD and it ranked third on Intel. Okay, so let's look at the relative value proposition before we go deep into our opinion. Here's the fancy math. It's CPU thermal max, which in this case is 100 degrees Celsius, minus the CPU temperature under load. Then we divide that number by the retail price. That gives us a dollars per degree of cooling value, which we can then scope and compare against other AIOs. In this case, the lower the score, the better. These numbers are based off of the data we collect from our Intel benchmark and the most up-to-date prices. These values will change over time, so if you watch a more recent AIO review and their AIO's been out for a while, you might see it actually change in value proposition. Now with this one, with a relative value score of 9.40, the LC3 is closest in value to the Trix Panorama ARGB 360 at 9.26, with the Corsair IQ-Link H150i RGB beating it by nearly a dollar per degree at 8.45. So with all of that in mind, would we recommend the ASUS RG Strix LC3 as your next AIO? Like I said in the intro, we're actually pretty vexed by this AIO. On one hand, we can see where ASUS put a lot of thought into making the LC3 ready to accommodate modern CPUs with its buffed up pump, performant fans, and expanded cold plate. They even provided features like that magnetic pump cap to help it orient to a builder's preference. All of these things are actually amazing. But then they do weird stuff like USB to control the pump head's lighting instead of using an ARGB header. And when we look across the landscape of AIOs, we see 360 millimeter AIOs like the Fantex Glacier 1D30 that beat the LC3 in price by $55 and in gaming performance on both platforms by two degrees Celsius. So value here is not great. Please understand we're not saying that the LC3 is a bad AIO. I mean, you can check out how well it performed when we used it in the stream on this ASUS GT302. It's just that we've seen other AIOs perform better that are either around the same price or they're less expensive. I know people joke around here about the ROG tax, and this is one place where it kind of feels really noticeable. That being said, we do have to give ASUS some kudos for releasing a Strix AIO at a lower price point than what we've seen with the Ryujin. So do you see why we're conflicted over the LC3? Since we really do believe that there is no one size fits all tech solution for everyone, and that an AIO like the LC3 might not make sense to everyone's builds, 
we have to ask a different question. What kind of PC does the Asus RG Strix LC3 make the most sense for? Now, when we look at the LC3, we see an AIO that falls in a similar category to the NZXT Kraken 360 or Corsair's IQ Link H150i. Those AIOs are good in their own right, and they look amazing when they're part of like a similar ecosystem, whether that's an all NZXT build or an all Corsair build. Are they always the most performant? They're not really chart topping, but they're more than adequate. Then again, if you're building a themed rig, performance usually isn't the primary consideration. I'm not saying it isn't close, but it's not the prominent thing. So with that in mind, if you're building an ultimate Asus ROG build and maybe cost means something, and you don't have those Ryujin bucks, the LC3 is a great alternative that'll keep the theme alive. On top of that, if you're building with an Asus motherboard and GPU, it just makes sense to use other devices that share the same software rather than having to install multiple pieces of controlled software and have all of your CPU dogged down by all of that bloatware in some regards. And in that light, I think we understand the LC3 a bit better. And those are our thoughts on the Asus LC3 AIO, but we wanna know what you think. Do you like keeping your components with the same ecosystem, or do you want to branch out based on factors like price and performance? I'd love to know that down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a video like this right here in Robitech. And if you want to continue the conversation or just want to ask more questions about whether this is the right AIO for you, head over to our Discord server, discord.gg slash Robitech. Amazing place to talk to other tech and PC and enthusiasts who love to have these conversations. And you know what? You might just make a friend. Also, thank you so much for watching this video. We look forward to seeing you on the next one.